Hello and welcome to another episode of Retina Roundup. Our first article addresses the considerable variability in clinical practices regarding the need and length of face down position in patients after full thickness macular hole surgery. In a meta analysis of eight RCTs with 709 eyes included, the study analyzed the hole closure rates and visual outcomes in face down versus non face down position post macular hole surgery. The study concluded that there was no significant difference in the whole closure rates in both the groups, although the face down position did offer a visual outcome benefit in patients with large holes. So prone or not to prone, the study does recommend the need of prospective trials to improve the certainty of evidence of the outcomes so examined. Surgical induction of PVD is indeed the most crucial aspect of vitroretinal surgery and in spite of the advances in technology, PVD induction in young and pediatric patients always remains a challenge. Our second article aims at assessing the efficacy of pre-operative simultaneous injection of tissue plasminogen activator and autologous whole blood in facilitating intraoperative induction of PVD in the young. The study showed that in the 17 eyes included, separation of V-string from the optic nerve head was noted in all cases with a mean number of 2.86 attempts with no pre-operative or intraoperative complications. Autologous plasmin does open up promising avenues in performing vitreoretinal surgeries in the young. Our third article aims at investigating the adjunctive effect of an intravitreal ROC inhibitor facodil with intravitreal bevacizumab on refractory macular edema secondary to retinal vein occlusion. In the 17 eyes included in the study, the best corrected visual acuity was noted to improve in all patients after having three consecutive injections of the combination with a considerable decrease in central macular thickness too. The patients were also noted to maintain the anatomical and functional improvement at the 12-month follow-up with no adverse effects reported, thus highlighting the role of intravitreal ROC inhibitors as the potential agents in breaking the resistance to anti-VEGF therapy in refractory macular edema cases. Our fourth article aims at analyzing and comparing the characteristics of macular morphology and microcirculation in diabetic macular edema patients with and without macular serous detachments. The study showed the presence of a higher central macular thickness, increased number of hyperreflective foci in complete retina, increased proportion of EZ disruption, and increased subfovial choroidal thickness in patients with serous retinal detachment as compared to patients with no serous retinal detachment. The presence of serous retinal detachment is an enigma, and the study concludes that disruption of external limiting membrane and hyperperfusion of the choroid could be the possible causative factors for the same. Our last article explores the efficacy and safety of trans subtenant ciliary nerve block anesthesia versus transcutaneous retrobulbar anesthesia in patients undergoing pars plana vitrectomy. In a prospective randomized double blinded clinical trial, 120 patients were randomly allocated to the two groups. The visual analog scores used to evaluate the pain during the process showed lesser pain scores for the subtenant anesthesia during the implementation of anesthesia through the surgery and also on post operative day one. No patients were reported to require supplementary anesthesia during the surgery, and also no life threatening complications of anesthesia were reported. Thus, the study concluded the possibility of using a subtenant ciliary nerve block anesthesia for a vitrectomy for a relatively less pain-free experience for the patient with a better akinesia as well. This was all for this month. See you next month with five new articles. Stay tuned.